Hi, I'm going to talk to you about Fuchs uveitis syndrome. Fuchs uveitis syndrome or Fuchs heterochromic cyclitis has traditionally been characterized by iris heterochromia. And keratic precipitates that are typically evenly spaced over the entire corneal endothelial surface. Often stellate in shape with fine interconnecting spindles as can be seen here. Long-standing KP may be pigmented and sometimes produce an impressive appearance on gonioscopy. However, the clinical features of Fuchs vary extensively and careful clinical examination is essential to make the diagnosis. The iris changes that result in heterochromia may be dramatic, such as the loss of the posterior iris pigment layer. This is seen in blue and green irides, often with a transparent membrane around the whole circumference of the pupil margin. The transparent membrane can be seen uh, in this uh, case. And again here. Despite chronic inflammation and a pupillary membrane, the pupil still reacts and posterior synechiae do not develop. Iris transillumination in Fuchs contrasts with the classical appearance of pigment dispersion syndrome. When transillumination occurs in severe iritis, it is often accompanied by iris sphincter damage, whereas the sphincter is usually spared in Fuchs. Extensive loss of iris pigment in Fuchs as seen here should not be confused with ocular albinism as seen in this case. There are many conditions that result in loss of iris pigment, such as PDS, PXF, acute anterior uveitis, and also IOL chafing the iris. But Fuchs is the only one in my experience that results regularly in a pigment-free trabecular meshwork. making it much easier to see these unique, usually solitary vessels that cross to brecular meshwork, which when visible are virtually pathognomonic of Fuchs. Rarely, and usually in more inflamed eyes, multiple vessels are seen crossing the angle circumferentially as well as radially. The clinical appearance, course and significance of these vessels are very different from regular neovascularization. Synechiae, both peripheral anterior or posterior, do not develop unless there's been previous surgery or some other complication. Similarly, in lighter coloured irides, fine abnormal vessels may be seen crossing the iris surface. The heterochromic effect results from loss of anterior iris stroma in the affected eye, as seen here. And also in this case. In dark coloured irides, the typical iris appearance is different, iris stroma loss less obvious and heterochromia minimal. Instead, nodules are often seen in the anterior stroma or the pupil margin. These nodules are often seen in a very regularly ordered circumferential pattern. Dramatic floaters are often the earliest symptom of Fuchs, usually predating the development of cataract and glaucoma which though frequent tend to occur later. In some cases, vitreous opacification causes significant vision impairment requiring vitrectomy. Secondary open angle glaucoma is common in Fuchs, typically resistant to medical therapy and often requiring surgery. And it is important to be aware of the glaucoma risk when dealing 
with the common sequelae such as cataract and vitreous opacities. Even IOL deposits may be severe enough to obscure the optic disc view, in this case coating both sides of the IOL. It is also critical to be aware not only of the risk of glaucoma, but of the frequent necessity for aggressive surgical management. Topical steroid treatment exacerbates the glaucoma problem. While useful in some cases, such as those with IOL deposits, topical steroids should not be used routinely to treat flare-in cells, as these have no long-term proven benefit in Fuchs, in contrast to other types of uveitis. Thank you for watching.